Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about the output caching in ASP.NET Core, which is a mechanism for caching HTTP response on the server to improve the performance and to reduce the server load. Come, let's get started. So type of caching. First of all, ASP.NET Core provides various caching options including the in-memory cache and the distributed cache. So what is in-memory cache? In-memory cache stores the data in the server's memory and distributed cache like Radish allows multiple servers to access a shared cache. Now here is the beautiful things for ASP.NET Core 7. Output caching is something that is introduced in ASP.NET Core 7 as a server-side caching mechanism. So what it does is, it caches the HTTP response generated by the server and it is not dependent on client-side cache header. Now how do we do this? So here's the example, if you're looking at my screen, we have a project called uh, Output Cache App. It's a simple one, it's a regular uh, controller, okay, we do not have anything else here. The only thing that I've introduced is a delay of one second so we know whether it is going inside this or not going inside this. All right, so everything else is, now if you look at the program.cs, we have a very simple logic. So under the builder.service, you can add something called add output cache. This is available and it will be applicable only when you have the .NET 7.0 as a framework. It's not available before this version. Enabling the output cache is done through the middleware, like how you see in the middleware pipelines, right? So the first request, what will happen is to any of the endpoint is handled as usual. It always goes to the endpoint. However, the subsequent request will be returning a cache response without executing the server logic. So that will eventually reduce the server load. Okay, so that's the idea. So now we can also do one thing like, you know, uh, basically instead of just having the add output cache you can pass the options so output caching provides option to control how cached response is stored and retrieved so in this case we are saying the expiration is set to the 20 seconds all right so now if you come all the way through down all what you have to do is in the middle where you need to enable app dot output cache that's it and then you can also do more things like you know for the controllers, you can map this cache output. Here also you can pass the option and there are many options here. For example, by default, our endpoint will be like this, right? So the endpoint that we have and uh, what will happen is if you if you pass a uh, set vary by query, you can use this query parameter and you can say based on this query parameter, which is location, if the value is different, then don't cache it allow the server to execute the request and if I just uncomment and show you what are the other options you can see there are many other options like set vary by header by host all right the query is the one that we used vary by route value so we have different output caching so fine so now it's time for demo so now let's just run this and I'll show you how it works all right so we have got this now let's try this so what will happen is first time when you execute you see this there's a one second delay one second delay is because it's going to our controller but if i execute further it is instantly coming it is not even going to the server right so that's the that's how it is so now let's take this one because the current url is this right so let's go here and if i paste like this it takes at least one second if I refresh, see it's instantly coming. But if I change this to, let's say, a different letter, now it took one second. If I refresh, it's instantly coming. So basically, now the mechanism that we used is vary by query based on the location parameter. So based on that also, it is executed. So this is what uh, the output caching is. So if you if you look at the benefit, the output caching in ASP.NET Core will actually enhance the performance by serving your cache response and reducing the server processing for repeated request okay so that way we will save a lot of load from the server side also it provides the flexibility in customizing the cache setting and varying responses based on the request parameters making it a valuable tool for optimizing web applications all right i hope you enjoyed this video and uh, if you like this video subscribe to my channel and hit on the like button 
and i will see you in the next video of the rate limiting app thanks for watching if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tech tutorials and don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos if you have any questions or suggestions leave them in the comments below happy coding